Okay, hi everyone. Thank you for taking some time to go over our security awareness training here at Cola Banker Hedges. Um, and this is not only to keep you safe and keep our company safe, but to keep your clients safe as well. So we're going to go over um, always think twice, no clicking, no phishing, uh, report suspicious emails or activity. You reserve the right to say no. Be vigilant and be aware, and security is everyone's responsibility. So our agenda today will go over the purpose, different threats, prevention techniques, your mobile devices, your passwords, your detection, and your security role. So first part, information security, the purpose. So back when the internet was first kind of gaining speed, people would hack in to other people's computers and accounts they could, you know, it was kind of fun. You know, can I do it? Sure. Um, nowadays, it's more about financial reasons. You know, they want to hack into your bank account and steal your money. So let's go over some different threats. Um, there's four that we'll cover today, natural, physical, technical, and people. Natural threats would be, you know, from Mother Nature. So fire, um, wind, lightning, rain, anything crazy like that. Your physical threats would be um, unauthorized individuals that have access to your sensitive information. So whether they are looking at your phone or computer screen over your shoulder or you leave it unattended, um, you don't dispose of documents properly and they can look at documents laying on your computer or if they're um, wandering around the building unescorted. Technical threats are going to be exposing your system to attack, disruption, or damage through remote or physical access. So basically getting any kind of malware on your computer that could show up as these different types of um, viruses. And one other type could be ransomware. So if somebody hacks into your computer, they lock up your information and they demand a ransom, typically with Bitcoin, um, before that they'll release your documents and information back to you. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. And our last threat here is people. So there's different actions that somebody might take to try um, to get into places they shouldn't be. So like with opening doors, you know, maybe it's at a building where you need a key card to enter and somebody wants to hack in there. They might stand outside with, you know, a big box in their arms, wait for someone that works there to come by and say, hey, you know, my arms are full. Can you open the door for me? And then they walk right in. Um, eavesdropping, you know, they might be listening to you on a phone call with um, somebody that you're giving up personal information. So be aware where you are when you're on the phone and what you're saying. And the biggest technique here is social engineering. So they might, you know, walk into the office dressed appropriately that they look like they're from an IT company and say, hey, I've come to repair your machine and I have some software updates. Um, they might call you and just say, hey, this is your system admin. Your computer is locked. What's your password? Um, or you might get an email that says, hey, we noticed you have a problem, a problem with your account. You know, click here to log in and update your information. So we have a training exercise here for social engineering. So let's say you get a phone call. Hi, this is John from IT. I've been working with Mike Esker on a new security initiative for our team at Coldwell Banker, and I need your help in order to get this done by the end of the day. I'm just going to email you a link, and all you have to do is click it. This will allow a new security update to be easily downloaded onto your computer. The update is going to make your computer more secure and also faster. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes for the download to finish, so you can give yourself a mini break while it's running. Once the download is complete, all you have to do is restart your computer and you'll be set. If you have a few minutes now, I can walk you through how to kick off this process over the phone. Let's start with you clicking the link I just emailed you. You'll find it in your inbox. So some different techniques that this um, person is using. Sense of urgency. We need it done by the end of the day. It only takes a few minutes. Let's get started. Next thing is they're dropping credibility. So they're gonna say they work with Mike or they've been working with Mike. We know who Mike is, we know he's legit. So if they say that, they're thinking, you know, we can probably get you um, to pay attention to this phone call and do what I'm saying. Um, personal incentive. So it'll make your computer faster, more secure, you get a mini break. And of course the power dynamic of 
I'm from IT. I know what I'm talking about. You need to listen to what I'm saying. So again, just a few things to kind of keep in mind when you get different phone calls or even emails. So with emails, um, to prevent phishing, you want to kind of break down the email and look at what's going on. So they're going to appear to originate from a trusted source to trick the user into entering your credentials. So first red flag is the email it's coming from. So up at the top, kind of hard to read, but it's coming from mazoncanada.ca. Amazon's not going to email you from that email address. Um, the second red flag here is that it's generic, dear client. And then the third flag here is down at the bottom with the website they want you to click on. If you hover on it on your computer, you'll see that it's going to redirect dot whatever that is dot com. So again, Amazon's not going to direct you there. If you get something like this, go to Amazon and verify that your account is as it should be. So and now with Apple, this one looks kind of legit. So you've got to look at it very carefully. Um, your first question would be, did I just buy something from Apple? Did I just contact Apple support? And with the email address it's coming from, it says appleaccount.com. Pretty sure Apple emails from at apple.com. So again, they, they're going to try to trick you. Be careful. And if you did have contact with Apple, go to apple.com or call Apple and figure out what's going on instead of clicking on things here in this email. Um, so with the Google Drive email, again, you know, ask yourself, are you waiting on something coming from Google from somebody else? Um, and also with this one, their grammar is pretty incorrect or poor. So if you look at the blue line there, click here, just sign in with your email to view the document. It's very important, semicolon. Um, so a lot of these phishing emails, the grammar is just awful. So that's usually a big giveaway right there. So we sent out a phishing campaign to our staff and agents. And this is a copy of the email. So if we kind of look through this, we can find the different techniques that they're using. So the first part there, the email it's coming from human resources at prodc.us. Again, if that's coming from anyone in our company, it's going to come from at cbhrealty.com. Um, so your personal incentive, it's going to be changes to your benefits plan. You have your sense of urgency that you need to do it by no later than Friday, and it only takes five minutes. Um, I'm going to skip down to the bottom there. It's very you know generic um, signature. There's no name. There's no phone number. And then to the email address in the middle there, it's coming from human resources at coldwellbanker.com. For us, we don't have, or we're never going to email you from that type of email address. Ours are always going to be at cbhrealty.com. And we don't have human resources at cbhrealty.com. It would be coming from Nancy Rubis or Mike Esker. So again, you got to really look at things to make sure you know where they're coming from. If you're on your phone and you're not quite sure, um, on the left side, you can tap that Cobalt Banker Human R, you can tap on that. And then on the right side, it shows the email address that it's coming from. So again, you can check this out on your phone as well. And don't be clicking on things on your phone. So of the 126 people that we sent that to, 61 opened the email, 17 clicked on that link, and 11 people started to enter their credentials. So again, be careful. So here's some different prevention techniques. Um, shut down or lock your computer when you walk away from it and keep your workstations clean. Um, position your devices to prevent unauthorized view. Don't leave your devices in your car and use a crosscut shredder to dispose of data. So here we have an example of a messy desk versus a clean desk. So, you know, put your stuff away. Just make sure that you have all your important things put away so that they're not easily seen by passersby. Um, so with line shredding on the left side, we have a document that was manually reconstructed by the Iranian government. And on the right side, we have a document that was reconstructed with a computer software. So if you need to destroy documents, use a cross shredder or um, we have gray shred bins in all of our offices. Um, they're locked, so you can put your docs in there and then they will get taken to the appropriate um, place to be destroyed. 
So, and then reduce your client risk. So if you need sensitive information from your clients, like social security numbers or account numbers, um, you need to call them and ask for that information. And same with when, like if you need to send that down to your lender or your closer for a transaction, you need to call that person. If you try to email out of our system with an email that contains a social security number, an account number, a credit card number, it will not leave our system. It will not get where you want it to go. So make a phone call with that information. Um, and when you get earnest money, cover up the MICR numbers before you um, make a copy of that check. And here is a demonstration of how to do that. Okay, I'm gonna show you the proper way to cover the MICR numbers on the check for earnest money. It takes one post-it note, you get it in the middle and cover the majority of the maker numbers, you're all good. That's all it takes. So now you do this before you make a copy. Put it on the copy screen, blank piece of paper on top, and the copier knows what size to make it. You can also change the size on the panel on the copier. Just scan it, send it, boom, you're done. Security intact. So again, very easy. Just make sure that you cover up the MICR numbers. Um, preventing technical threats. So make sure that you back up your data. So if somebody, you know, hacks in and locks up your stuff and demands a ransom, let them have it because you have a backup. You don't need to pay them to unlock your stuff. Um, uh, consider uh, using like iCloud or Dropbox or any other backups like that or an external hard drive. Uh, make sure you permanently destroy your sensitive data from all your devices. Um, use the shred bins for paper materials and don't use USBs that are found in public places. If you see it in the parking lot, leave it alone. So how to prevent people threats. Um, limit visitor access and escort them where they're going. Um, ask questions. You know, if it's somebody that's coming in with um, suspicious intentions, ask them questions. And if anything, just tell them no. You know, they can come back later or um, provide other examples of how they're legit and supposed to be there. Um, if you get a phone call, you know, confirm that person's identity before you start giving out your personal information. And with emails, again, don't click on links in the emails. Don't click on attachments. Go to that website and log in that way. So web browsing and mobile devices. Um, the threat would be allowing unauthorized individuals to view, manipulate, or steal sensitive information through unsecure web browsing and mobile device practices. So the biggest thing would be when you're out in public, um, stay on your data. Don't jump on the public Wi-Fi's. They might not actually be coming from that store or coffee shop or wherever you happen to be. It could be someone throwing up a fake Wi-Fi hotspot that once you jump on it, they get access um, into your device. So when you're web browsing, um, customize your computer settings and enable your pop-up blockers. Turn off the autofill functionality and always make sure that you log out of websites when you're finished. Don't just hit the X in the corner. Um, this is especially true for the public computers in our offices. Anybody can use those. And if you just hit the X in the corner and someone comes behind you and goes to open the email, well, they're in your email account. So make sure you log out of your websites. Um, when you're on a website, make sure you're on a secure site. So the top example here is HTTP. If someone were to log in, they're gonna see your password exactly as it is. On the bottom example, it's HTTPS. So if somebody hacks in, they're not gonna see your password exactly how it is. They're gonna see um, a whole long string of something that's totally different. Passwords. Okay, everybody's favorite topic, passwords. We all love them, right? So password dues, keep it private. Um, keep it long, think length more so than complexity. Use a passphrase, use song lyrics, a movie quote, and change it often. So password don'ts, don't disclose your password. Don't use your birthday, your social, your phone number, your family member names, your pet names. Um, don't use the username as the password. Don't share passwords across accounts. And again, that means for every different account, you should have a different password. 
and don't bunch together numerical or special characters at the beginning or end of a password. So um, how secure is your password? On the left there, we have four different options. And the most secure one, the longest time it would take to guess is the one on the bottom there. United States is where we live. There's no special characters. There's no numbers. It's just very long. Um, if you're not sure how secure your password is, you can go to howsecuresmypassword.net and you'll notice that is a secure site. It's HTTPS. So passwords are a pain. We all have trouble remembering them. Get a password management tool. You have to remember one master password and then these do the rest for you. Um, you could also use Keychain on Apple devices and I'm sure that um, Google and Droid devices have their own um, as well. But again, this will help. You know, you have one master password and then this takes care of the rest for you. So malware detection. How do I know if I've got malware in my computer? Um, probably get slow system performance, lots of loading screens. Your system might crash, lots of pop-ups. Might be suspicious entries or discrepancies, unsuccessful login attempts, um, appearance of unknown files, disappearance of disk space, and disabled firewalls. If you've got things like that coming up, um, contact the IT department and we can work on helping you uh, go about the right channels to get your computer checked out. So what is your security role? Always think twice, no clicking, no phishing. You reserve the right to say no, report suspicious emails or activity, be vigilant and be aware, and just remember that security is everyone's responsibility, not just the IT department, and it's to keep you, our company, and your clients safe. Thank you for listening, and be safe out there.